In this video, I'm going to do a full review on the ASUS X205 Notebook PC. So let's get to it. So in general, there are four categories of notebook PCs that you can get out there. The first category is the luxury category. Now luxury is definitely not my thing. I'm not into spending more money than I need to on something. I like to get devices that give me the most bang for my buck. The brand new MacBooks are not as powerful as some of the other laptops in the MacBook line, but you're basically paying for an extremely thin device, or should I say shallow device in more ways than one, and it only has one port on it. So you're probably not going to see any luxury devices reviewed on this channel. Another category would be a performance device. A high-end laptop that's giving you a lot of bang for your buck, and something like that would be used for high-end video editing or gaming, such as an Asus Republic of Gamers laptop PC. Another category would be the mid-range laptops that you can get anywhere from five, six, seven hundred dollars out there. That will be very versatile and give you a wide range of applications that you can use on it. This laptop here is a value laptop. And what that means is that it has a low entry price and it's not going to be as powerful as the other categories that I mentioned. So people who are looking to purchase a value computer will be concerned with certain things that they might not be concerned with on other categories of laptops. So the main concerns you're going to find on a computer like this are how does it perform and what is the build quality? Because again, you're paying the least amount of money for this category of computers, so the companies are not going to be able to put high-end components into these devices. Much like the HP Stream 11, I've got good news and bad news for you. For a value PC, an entry-level laptop, this is incredibly usable. Gone are the days of netbooks that are underpowered and frustrating to use. With the progress in the actual chips inside these devices and the lighter weight Windows 8.1 operating system running on it, you're going to get very usable performance in this device. That's the good news. The bad news is, of course, you're not going to be able to use every program your heart desires on this computer if you're into video editing, photo editing, or gaming. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at the device and see what it offers you in form of ports and the actual specifications on the device. So the first thing we're going to start with is the way it looks. The HP Stream 11 had a very distinctive design language. This device here is a little more basic and a little more understated. That might work for you, that might not work for you, but again, for a very inexpensive device, you're more interested in the way it functions than the way it looks. Now, I was fortunate enough to get this for $150 during a Black Friday deal at Best Buy. But right now, you can pick this up anywhere from $179 all the way up to $249. That's what I saw it on online recently. So definitely shop around if you're interested in this device. I wouldn't pay any more than $200 for it if I were you. It's a midnight blue, even though on the box that it came in it was listed as black, but this is a midnight blue device. You see the Asus branding up here, and that's actually embossed in there, and there has an, there's an inlay of a metallic-looking logo there, which is actually pretty cool. So on the spine of the device here, there's really nothing except these little tabs here. I don't know if you can see them there. There's one, and there's the other. So when you actually open the lid of this device, those form little feet. On the right side of the device, you'll notice that there are two USB 2.0 ports there, and there's nothing else. On the front of the device, there's really nothing except three LEDs down here. On the left side of the device, you'll notice that you actually have your power port here, you have a micro SD card slot, you have a micro HDMI port, and you have a combo headphone microphone jack here. Now the one thing to note is that this is a proprietary charging port here. So it's not micro USB, it's a proprietary cord that you're going to need. Fortunately, the device comes with it. Here's the cord itself. As you can see, it is not micro USB, it is not mini USB, it's just a squared off little cord there. So under the hood you have an Intel Baytrail T quad-core Z3735 1.3 gigahertz processor. Again, a quad-core processor. 
It's running Windows 8.1. It has two gigabytes of DDR3L SD RAM running at 1333 megahertz. As I mentioned before, you're not going to be running any high-end games on here, and that's because it has integrated Intel HD graphics. It doesn't have a hard drive in it. It has a 32 gigabyte eMMC drive, which is actually a solid state drive, and eMMC drives are actually used in tablets and phones and whatnot. It has built-in Bluetooth version 4.0, a 38 watt hour polymer battery. It measures 286 millimeters by 193.3 millimeters, and it's 17.5 millimeters in thickness. For those of us in the United States, that means 11.26 inches by 7.61 inches and 0.69 inches in thickness. It weighs 0.98 kilos or 2.16 pounds. So it's actually a very light device. Here's the bottom of the device and it looks like I need to clean it up a little bit. But you see that you have four rubberized feet down here and as you can see there's no compartment for the battery so it's a non-user replaceable battery. But you do have access points here where you can actually just use a regular screwdriver, a regular Phillips screwdriver to pull this panel off. Now down here you have two sp stereo speakers and they're positioned so that they will bounce off of the table and actually amplify your sound that way. So let's open this up and take a look at the screen. I won't turn it on as of yet. As you can see, it's a very shiny screen. And if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I would prefer a matte screen to a shiny screen 100% of the time. But in this category, you really don't have a lot of options. So I can deal with a shiny screen here. The interesting thing is, is that if you go onto the ASUS specifications page, it lists this screen as an 11.6 inch, course diagonally measured 16:9 aspect ratio HD glare panel it's all actually listed as a glare panel because it as you can see giving a lot of glare here but the resolution on this is 768 by 1366 you'll also notice that it's equipped with a webcam and this webcam is a VGA webcam so that's less than a megapixel. If you're interested in a video camera test, I've posted one, and you can click on the link at the end of this video to see it. Just to give you an idea of the comparison, the HP Stream 11 has a better webcam on it, but this does in a pinch. Basically, you're only gonna be using a webcam to do video chat, and it works just fine. So here's the keyboard layout here. And the one thing that they did with this computer is that they wanted to maximize the space of the touchpad. And I'm glad that they did. It's actually a larger touchpad than you'll find on the HP Stream 11. But in order to accommodate that larger touchpad, they actually had to shrink down the keys vertically. So if you'll notice, the keys are actually shorter than they are wide. But because the width is the same as a regular keyboard, it's not that noticeable and it's pretty easy to type on. Again, the design language is very basic, and that midnight blue continues to the inside and even on the trackpad here. Now the trackpad has a little line to delineate between the left mouse click and the right mouse click. Obviously you can accomplish your mouse clicks that way, or you can use the two finger method, and you can do that up here. Now the only drawback of having a larger touchpad on a computer this size is that the palm rests are smaller. So when I'm typing on here, sometimes I'll inadvertently touch the touchpad. And if I'm actively typing and I touch the touchpad, it'll actually move the cursor somewhere else where I don't want it to be. So I have to be extra careful when I am typing on this not to activate the touchpad. So as far as the specs are concerned, it seems like everything is there that you might need. The only thing that you have to be aware of is that it only has a micro SD card slot and not a full-sized SD card slot. So if, you're wor if you work a lot with full-sized SD cards, you're going to need an adapter for this. So just keep that in mind. Also, it has the micro HDMI port on it instead of a full HDMI port. So again, you would need an adapter or the appropriate cord for that. Other than that, again, a good variety of ports and connectivity for an entry-level device like this. So before we fire this up, again, this is a value PC. So one of the things that you would be concerned about is definitely the build quality. 
Now, I've been using this device for a couple of months now, and I have to say that for the price, it's a decent build quality. It doesn't, you know, the screen doesn't flex. It's pretty sturdy. I wouldn't want to drop this device, but it doesn't feel flimsy. The base itself doesn't flex, as you can see here. You can carry it by one side here without worrying about any flex or any damage to the device. On the seam down here, you can kind of feel how it's put together, and if you force it, you can make it move a little bit, but again, there's not a lot of flex on this. The build quality can't be top-notch in this price category, but it's decent, and as long as you don't continually drop your devices, you should be able to get by with this device. So just as a quick background on this device, Chromebooks have really taken a hold in the education market, and these devices are Microsoft's way of fighting back against Chromebooks. So Microsoft is not charging the OEMs, or the original equipment manufacturers, a licensing fee for Windows for machines that cost less than $250, which this device firmly falls into. So that actually brings down the price of these Windows laptops. That's how they're able to sell these at the prices that they do. So let's fire this up from a cold boot so you can see how fast it takes to load up Windows 8.1 on this. So in three, two, one. So there we go. Not bad at all. Of course, on the Windows Start screen here, if you want to move from side to side, just move it over. As you can see, everything works pretty smooth. And again, this device is very usable. So let's go onto the desktop here, and we're going to do a couple of things here. So I have Chrome brought up here, and we're going to go and look at a YouTube video in a second. But before I do that, I want to cover a couple things. If you see any flickering on here, which I do see a little bit over here, because I'm actually looking at the camera, or what's being recorded on the camera, uh, you only see that because that's only something between the laptop itself and the camera. You never see that in person. So just keep that in mind. You see a very solid colored, non-flickering screen in person here. But before we play back some videos, let's take a look at, I always like to show you how far back the screen will tilt on these laptops. So there you go. Generally, I find they don't have to be able to be pushed back all the way, but I do like as much flexibility in that as possible. Also, let's take a look at the viewing angles. Of course, you're really not concerned about the horizontal viewing angles, but let's show you that anyway. Mainly you're concerned about the vertical viewing angles. So not bad, not the best, obviously, but definitely not bad, especially for a $150 to $200 laptop. So as with the HP Stream 11, you're going to find that you can bog this computer down if you throw too much at it. However, if you're doing web surfing, online video, some basic tasks, you shouldn't bog down the system at all. My general rule for these entry-level devices is don't throw more than two or three tasks at it at a time. That way you know that it's going to run properly. Now, as I mentioned at the top of this video, you're not going to be able to run the latest games on this, or Photoshop, or Premiere Pro, video editing, photo editing. You're not really going to be doing that on this device unless you're using very basic programs. And if you're using those basic programs or basic games, you generally don't want to multitask on it at all. You just want to devote all your processing power to that one task. But if you're doing, you know, email and web surfing and whatnot, even a little bit of online video watching, two to three tasks is a good general rule. So I always do a video test when I review a laptop, and there's no better way than to use YouTube. So anyway, let's make this welcome video, which is pretty short. Let's make that full screen, and then let's play it, and I'll give you my thoughts once it's done.
So there we go. That was actually very good. Let's stop this before it plays another video. The video playback was excellent. There were no hiccups. There were no lost frames. And it's actually in the optimum position for the best sound out of this because I actually have it sitting on a table here. So the sound is very crisp. The sound was very loud. The speakers were good. So that's definitely a plus. Of course, when you have the laptop maybe in your lap, you're not going to get that optimum sound because it's not bouncing off of a hard surface like it is here. But again, the speakers are loud enough that you're not going to have any problems with it. And that's again a concern of a value laptop. The components they put in there aren't the highest end. So knowing that this device has decent sound coming out of it, at least as it pertains to volume, that's a plus. So how about Netflix? Generally, YouTube and Netflix, you're going to get the best performance out of those services because they are the most used video services on the entire internet. So there's a lot of optimization on the back end for that. But let's click on the Netflix example here. And I won't be infringing on copyright here because it's just their test. So let's take a look at that. So we're using an example short here, and I'm halfway through it. Let's actually make it large screen here or full screen. As you can see, that was bouncing the ball. You have a little bit of water sound in the background. Again, you don't see that flickering in person. That's just between the computer and the camera. But this gives you an idea of how it's playing. Now, a lot of this definitely uh, has to do with my wireless in the house. But as you can see, it has a bit rate of 1,050 kilobits per second, a resolution of 720 by 480, and it's very watchable. You don't see any dropped frames. So Netflix works perfectly on this device, in my experience. So how about all the other video services out there? Well, I can't show them to you because I don't want to have copyright strikes against my channel here, so I'll just tell you about them. You saw the YouTube test. You saw the Netflix test. Everything was working fine. Well, I'm happy to report that Hulu works just fine on here, Amazon Prime works just fine on here, and Vimeo works just fine on here. So pretty much any video service that I threw at this device it works perfectly fine on here. But what about games? Now generally when I do a review of a value laptop like this, I always get questions on if it'll play certain games. Now I can tell you that it will not play your high-end PC games. So no Dying Light, no Evolve on this PC here. But it will play Minecraft. So I have Minecraft pulled up on here. And let's just go back to the game here. And just want to show you a little bit of you know, just moving around here. As you can see, there's a couple drops in frame rate there, but you can still use it. So as you can see, Minecraft works on here. So one of the things I always like to try when I review a laptop is how smooth does it scroll when you're on a web page. So I'm going to use a two-finger scroll here and just move the page up and down. Everything seems to work pretty well. Now the one quirky thing that I found with this laptop that pertains to the trackpad is that it can lose functionality over time if you don't shut down your computer. So what I mean by that is that if you're, you know, messing with something online and then you want to close your laptop. Now, me, somebody who has cats, I have to close my laptop when I leave the room because my cat, one of my cats, will like to nibble on the corners of the laptop. And being that it has a plastic shell, those little nibble marks stay on the machine forever. So as long as the computer is closed, I don't have that problem. So I close the computer and then open it up again and close it up and open it up again. And I do that quite a bit without actually shutting the machine down. 
Now, it's not an exact science as to when this happens, but as you can see, the two-finger scroll is still working just fine. But if I do that over a long period of time without shutting the computer down, and it can be over a several day period that I do this, sometimes the trackpad will stop responding to a two-finger scroll. It will stop responding to the gestures. So if you're not familiar with the Windows 8 gestures, let's just go through a couple of them. Sliding in from the left. Sliding in from the right should bring up the charms and sliding in from the top. So there you can see that sometimes... Oh, there we go. I got it to work this time. There we go. But sometimes you lose some functionality on this on the trackpad when you close it up and, and bring it back from a sleep state, which I found which was kind of odd. So that's really the only real buggy quirk that I found with this computer. Now, I don't do battery tests on this channel, but I can say that the battery life on this computer is definitely sufficient. It should get you through a full day of work. So I never found that the battery life was a hindrance on this device. Now, with this machine, you do not get Office 365 like you get with the HP Stream 11. You do get cloud storage through Asus, though, and that's 500 gigabytes. So it's somewhat of a trade-off, but that's something you should definitely be aware of, especially if you're shopping for a laptop in this price category. So what's the verdict at the end of the day? Well, in this price category, you're looking at either buying a tablet, a Chromebook, or a similar Windows 8.1 notebook PC like this, such as the HP Stream 11. In my opinion, this device is going to give you a whole lot more functionality than you're going to get out of any tablet. And that's because I'm a fan of full operating systems. I'm a fan of multitasking. Multitasking is something that has not been fleshed out totally on tablets as of yet. So in my opinion, a laptop with a full operating system on it is superior to any tablet. However, everything comes down to your use case. So if you're the type of person that likes tablet apps, then of course you're going to gravitate towards tablets. But I'm talking about general computing. I think that this is definitely superior to any tablet out there. As far as comparing this to a Chromebook, you're going to have to decide again your use case. Can you live inside the Chrome OS experience? Personally, I can live within Chrome OS for probably about 80 to 85 percent of my computing. But if you can't, then this is a great alternative to a Chromebook. Because again, you can still run Chrome on this in addition to all the Windows apps that you might want or need. So then, how does this compare to something like the HP Stream 11? Well, that comes down to your budget. If you're going to find this laptop here for $200, then definitely purchase the HP Stream 11 because it's a little bit better device in build quality and it has a little faster processor in it. And it has more options as far as ports are concerned. But if you can find this for less than $200, like I did for $150, $179, it's a definite bargain and it's going to get you into Windows 8.1 on an entry level device that's usable. I can't stress that enough. If you're the type of person that needs access to Windows, but you don't need all the bells and whistles, and you don't need a powerful machine, you just need basic computing tasks, and the option of running Windows programs, then this device is an excellent device for you. Again, it all comes down to price though. If you can find this for less than $180, I'd say definitely pick it up. If you're looking at that $200 price category, definitely go with the HP Stream 11. So that's going to do it for this video. I'm still working on my review format and I'm going to be changing it over the next few months. But tell me what you thought of this video. Leave a comment in the comments down below. And as always, if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up, favorite this video, share this video, or you can actually join my Patreon. You can go over to patreon.com slash techharvest and see what I have offered over there. I do offer access to exclusive content, early access to videos, and of course I do a seasonal giveaway. 
So check out patreon.com slash techharvest for that. So what do you think of the Asus X205 Notebook PC? Let me know. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.